Hey, I'm Steve Tillman, and boy, I got a nice one for you today. A 1995 Quest 217, 21 foot 7 inches. It's got a nice bow spread on the front. It's got the Euro transom in the back. Two uh, transom doors with the slant at the back, uh, which is really, this was the beginning of all that Euro transom look. It's, it's what everybody wants. I'll tell you, we've been cleaning on this boat for a few days and, and the uh, gel coat has really buffed up. I don't know how well you can see it in the pictures, but it has really gotten slick and shiny. The boat's really cleaned up much nicer than I would have expected. I just want you to get up close and take a look. It's got the original stripes on it. It's got the original stripes, rub rails in nice shape. See how it says by OMC? OMC got the manufacturing business and uh, they were hanging Johnson's and Evinrude's on the back. And I'll tell you, this boat's got a 200 horsepower uh, two cycle engine and it runs like a top. I've just spent a lot of time and money going through it and uh, I just want to show you up close. You know, these boats were they're carbureted. And they were born from the factory with oil injection. And what most people have done later, you, you know, this boat's over 10 years old. What most people have done is they've disconnected the oil injection and they just mixed their own oil and gas, you know, a 50 to 1 ratio. Uh, why? Well, the, the main reason is, the main reason is that uh, eliminates oil pump failure. And so if you're, you know, I was raised on mixing our oil and gas and we never had oil pumps, but uh, during this period of time, there were some folks that thought that was the best way to go. I, it doesn't bother me, I like it. But the head, but the, but the block on the boat is real clean. Uh, I've just had the uh, flywheel redone. And I don't know if you can see it up underneath there, but the timing base has just been replaced. And I've just spent about another $400 uh, replacing the control box. So for all intents and purposes, I've been through this ignition system, done the flywheel, done the timing base, and put a new control box on it. I can't imagine, you know, I think you're probably good for, and it's never been replaced, so, you know, if it's been on there over 10 years, so we'll see. But we've done a compression test on it. All the cylinders are, are up on it. We put new spark plugs in it. Uh, it's just a clean engine. The lower unit, take a look, Bridget. Lee. Yeah, what you're seeing here is just dust. It's got some dust on it. It's clean. Lower unit looks good. Transom looks nice on the boat. Just want to show you, see what we were talking about with these, oh, it's got the cushions in front of it. But see how it's got the, uh, it's got a transom door over here, and then I'll show you, it's got a real nice bait station at the back. Uh, let's walk around this side. Uh, just a few little scuff, just a little scuff right there, I'd leave it alone, wouldn't touch it. But then just coming down the, the ports on the uh, starboard side, it's just plain. A couple little necks right here in the uh, decant and the uh, stripes, but I'd leave it alone. Shiny. Shiny, shiny, shiny. Hey, we just launched down here on the beautiful St. John's River. We're smelling some of this uh, Maxwell Health House coffee over here that they're brewing for you. Pick from the finest beans in the world by Juan Valdez. Do you believe that? <laughs> I've been to Costa Rica, it's really true. Hey listen, monster bow on this 21 foot boat. Huge, you know, huge bow to handle your, your anchor when you're, you know, when you're coming in. And then, you know, I love it. The bow sprit keeps your you handle it right. It keeps your bow. It keeps your anchor out there. Keeps you from beating your uh, beating your boat to death. It obviously has worked for this guy because the, the bow of the boat's in good shape. And then also, you know, if you're up here and you're casting, if you 
you spread your legs and you're casting or you're doing this or whatever, you know, you've got some shot at, you know, bracing yourself. I like it. Or if you want to work the anchor from back here, it works fine. Huge anchor locker for your rope and chain. Huge. I mean, you, you pretty much put in there whatever you want. It's nice and clean. Uh, bow cleats on the support and starboard side. Running lights, they both work. And then, uh, I mean, uh, nav uh, port and starboard lights. And then a real nice uh, bow storage area. Or you could use it for a fish box. It's got a little uh, drain in the bottom of it if you want to use it to, uh, to put some ice in and so forth. Uh, this boat was born with a cooler in the front. And this cooler has got a little age on it. And it's probably, although it's functional, Probably time to throw it away and get a new one. I want you to hear something one time. See these horns right here? Check this out. <laughs> the loudest I've ever heard on a 21-foot boat. There's two horns back here, and they're huge. Uh, the T-top's in pretty good shape for a 95-model boat. The stitching has come undone here. It's not ripped, but the, 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 the thread has uh, been compromised. Nice big electronics box, flared windshield, uh, lots of room on the port and starboard side to navigate around, you know, to get through here. If you're fishing, lots of room. I could fish one, two, three, I could fish six people out of this boat and have somebody driving. I wouldn't have any problem putting seven people on this boat. This is our safety box. If you were, if you were in a normal situation, you'd have all of your 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 safety equipment. You'd have all of your uh, life jackets up top. Uh, cockpit light. I didn't want to show you. It's got an oversized live well at the back, and it does uh, must have a monster pump on it. And that live well comes way over here, so that's got to be about, I don't know, what do you think, about 15 gallons? I'd say at least 15 gallons. And then just what we talked about before is the two doors and the transom. Now what they did here, what OMC did, is they made these where you can take them out. Take them out, they've got little magnets right there. And so all of a sudden, you know, you've got two accesses on the back, in and out. Nice design. Really, a, you know, really a nice design. Back in the 90s, this boat, Chris Craft, there were a bunch of these guys that were being real formidable about their design. Okay, and then a little bait station right here. This is all starboard. This is all starboard right here. And um, so you can do some cutting if you want to. And then down here, you got access to your pumps and the uh, fuel water separator and uh, that sort of thing. And then you've got rod holders on both sides. Okay, now what they've got is storage on the port and starboard side. And I just looked down in the bilge and the bilge is dry as bone. But, but for whatever reason, there, there must be an outlet on the outside of the boat that he could, uh, drain his, he could drain this going out. So what I might do if it was me is I'd put, kind of put like a uh, a check valve on it so the water would go out but it couldn't come in. But anyway, pretty nice. Goes up in there about, I don't know, about a foot maybe that way. So it's about five or six foot long. And then the same way over here, this seat comes out And then you know you're what you're doing what you're doing in a deal like this is you're just adding all of your fishing room mm -hmm. and then you're adding some seating room so conceivably you could put one guy one two three four and you know have some sitting down room if you wanted to you could even make yourself a custom backrest here that you could take in and out a lot of possibilities the boat is so darn cheap that you know you could spend a few dollars on it and you know get it like you wanted. Just want to show you this leaning post and then we'll run it for you one time. Uh, it's got storage back here on the back 
and it's got although inexpensive it's got uh, plastic rod holders right here room to put your uh, knife and your uh, pliers and whatever you want to if you had some things ready to go so really just a nice setup your batteries uh, are under the uh, console two autocraft uh, marine batteries they look pretty darn new and um, and like I said, somebody's taking off the the uh, the direct injection from the oil tank, so you're mixing your own oil and gas 50 to 1. No, another nice thing that they did on this boat is they put in padded combing, obviously padded combing. Mm -hmm. They put in combing for about six and a half feet inside the cockpit. Nice, this boat's got nice high sides. And I was noticing when we were running up here, she rides bow high. It's a big 21 and a half foot boat. Nice transom, big electronics box, nice storage right here. I'm not going to show it to you because the boys didn't clean it. Cup holders, which I've come to find out are rare and are not on every boat. Just, just a nice setup. And just, just so you, we can get some idea of the boat running, I'm going to store these right there. Crank this little girl up for you. Quiet. Idle's nice. Got a nice screen. You running? Okay, are you holding on? Shifts in the forward real nice. Quiet, smooth. Alright, Bridget Lee. Don't let us run 30 in the channel here. I want you to hold on now. Are you holding on? We'll go ahead and jack it up a little bit and show you what's going on.
show you, look at the water pressure. All kind of water pressure, charging, everything's working. buy this tooth. I lost it in the backyard. I think the cat ate it. I think what happened is the cat ate it. Ain't nothing you can do about that. I, I tell you, I pushed on that cat for a week. <laughs> I said, squirt it out. Squirt it out. That cat was going, ugh, ugh. No tooth. <laughs> hey, listen. It's been great riding with you. Nice boat, really. I just wanted you to see it. You know what's funny? I was sitting here thinking about it. 90, over 10 years old, 95 mile boat. Uh, surprisingly, or not surprisingly, you walk around this boat, you go around the transom, you know how many stress cracks are back there on that transom? You know how many are back there in the places where you would normally see them on a new boat? Nada. Zero. Might be a few little hairline things, you know, down in there from, uh, you know, whatever. But I'm talking about stress from going out and running that 200 Johnson being back there on the back the boats the boat is hard as a rock solid solid I tell you what if I ever got to a point in my life when I when I wanted to change up engines and I wouldn't do it just for the heck of it I'd keep the boat I'd keep the boat and uh, I'd run that thing until it said <coughs> until it coughed I'd sell it for parts on eBay. Believe me, I just put a thousand dollars worth of parts on it, and uh, I'd put, I'd, you know, I'd change up a four-stroke on the back of it. You'd still have it. You couldn't go out and buy this hull. You couldn't go out and buy a twenty-one foot hull trailer for eight thousand dollars, nine thousand dollars with a Euro transom, T-top, live well, big bait station in the back. It's supposed to hell of a buy. It's a hell of a buy. Nice boat. Nice boat. Uh, a lot of nice features, 95 model, they were thinking. Hey, listen, on behalf of all the Tillman family, 
Bridget and all of our children. Uh, thank you for riding with us. Call me anytime. Steve Tillman, 866-935-0272 or 904-509-4336. If you want to email me, you can email me to Tillman, T-I-L-L-M-A-N, Tillman Auto, A-U-T-O, at hotmail.com. That was easy, wasn't it? Hey, listen, on behalf of all the Tillmans again, thanks for riding with us, and we'll see you on the river.